will get up to the ring now where Larry Merchant trying to get himself into position with the champion, Mike McCallum. I'll hold it here until I know Larry is with Mike McCallum. Let's go up. Larry Merchant with Mike McCallum. La okay, Mike, uh, you're, you're now, you're still a junior welterweight champion, but I think a junior welterweight champion middle, with a little bit more recognition, junior middleweight champion. Mike, tell us, it, you were, it was a hard fight for you up until very the last hard. moment, wasn't it? Very, very hard. I expected that because Donald Curry, the very, very great champion. You know it, I do. I mean, he seemed quicker. He was landing some good punches. Were you befuddled at that point by the fourth round? The speed in the first, earlier on, his speed was very, I didn't expect him to be that fast. I know he's a very sharp puncher, quick puncher, but I didn't expect him to be that fast. I didn't underestimate him no time at all because I know Curry, the great, great fighter. And he really buckled you and hurt, hurt yes, you early he on. Yes, he did. I mean, it was, you, it was about as near to the canvas as you've ever been, isn't it? The nearest to the canvas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Man. then what happened? How did the knockout happen from, from your point of view? Set him up. I set him up beautifully. I see every time I try to get next to him, he'd be in and out. Yeah. He in and out. He tried to steal me and then back out. Something similar to what McCoy was doing the last fight. Describe it here. Can you describe what you're seeing? You're seeing He's dropping his right hand. Oh. Dropping his right hand. Yeah. And, he and was moving back. There and moving back. Are you saying that he was in a kind of rhythm, that there was a rhythm to his movement out yeah. and in and in you and were and timing out. the rhythm? Right. Time to hit him. I show him the right uppercut. Show it to him because I come real slow with it. Show it to let him see it. And he was backing up and I was moving in at the same time. So he didn't know exactly what I was doing. He think I was going to move in to try to hook him to the body, but I changed him right on top. Because every time I hooked to the body, he was covering up very good in, inside because he knows about my, in, my body punching to the body. So I noticed he was covering up in the body very, very well. So I said, I'm going to shift to the body, act as if I'm going to the body, then put it to the top. It was all over. Uh, uh, tell us then that had you seen something from your point of view coming into the fight that told you that you didn't think Curry could really handle someone of your natural, bigger strength? Definitely. I saw him fight twice with two junior middleweights, and he won by a, well, a headbutt disqualification. And um, I saw the tape with Hunnigan, and I realized he was vulnerable for a right hand and a left hook. I know he chose right hand and hooks very well, so I said to myself, I won't beat him with the same punch. What now for you? Do you want to go up into the middleweight division where there's a Tommy Hearns, a Michael Elijah Day, where there might be bigger money? Is that your goal now? Tommy Definitely. Hearns. Thomas Hearns, Marvin Agler, anybody's there. I'm moving up in the middleweight. I'm going to win. It's the same way. I'm much stronger. I was very strong today. Curry got me a good left hook. And I didn't, I didn't go to the canvas, but you said it was closest to the canvas so far. A very, very good left hook. He was a great fighter. But I knew, sooner or later, because I see when I hit him to the body, he was slowing down. Slowing down, gradually. And I know we had 15 rounds. So uh, I knew I'd catch up with him sooner or later. Are you going to give up your junior middleweight title to go after the middleweights, or are you just going to wait till, this, till it happens and the opportunity presents itself? Well, I'm going to talk with my handlers. I think they can talk better about that than I can. But I want to say this. My country has its 25th anniversary. And I, I wanted so badly to give them this fight for the anniversary. Happy, happy anniversary, Jamaica. Happy anniversary, Jamaicans. I'm very happy I did it for you all. I think I did it in fine style. Couldn't be better. I hope you all enjoy it and have a great anniversary. Thank you I very much. I must say again, my mom is next door to me here. <laughs> oh. I love her very much. And of course, she was here to cheer me on in the big fight. We know full well that Donald Curry was a great great legendary champion challenger and we know well it's going to be a tough fight but mom pray for me and she believed in me and i win this fight and the right. left hook helped a little bit too so. okay thank you mike and back to ringside thank you very much <laughs> All right, thanks very much, Larry Merchant. You know, Mike McCallum, I found him to be really a very, very nice guy. That's about the best way I can think of to describe him. He's just a very good guy. He's a very unpretentious guy. And when we were sitting and talking with him the other day, he said something, and I, I don't think he said it in a braggadocious kind of way, but he just said very quietly, I think Donald Curry is overrated. And I think he went out and proved that tonight. Well, I think justice prevails here. Uh, tonight, Mike McCollum was a judge and he gave the final verdict that he was indeed champion. Uh, I'm very happy for Mike McCollum because now 
he would be recognized as truly a good champion. Speaking of judges and final verdicts, you uh, settled a case out of court here. Well, I tell you one thing about this. That fight had a lot to do with everything. Um, it was self-explanatory tonight. All right, let's get back up to the ring now. Larry Merchant is with Donald Curry. Larry? Donald, you seemed to be taking control of the fight when you got hit with a left hook. What happened? Uh, I don't know. I just I just got careful and Mike caught me with the left hook. Did you do you remember that you were beating him to the punch that you almost knocked him down in the uh, second yeah, round? I remember uh, a lot, but uh, I don't I don't know what happened. Really. Is there something missing Donald? Did you have to work too hard to make weight? Do you feel that there's something gone from you after the Huntington loss? Uh, no, not really. I just I, don't, I really don't know. It just caught up with me. I don't I really don't know. Are you going to stay with it? Go back to welterweight? Uh, I'm just going to evaluate uh, this and, and then go back. You're in a bit of shock now. You fought a good fight up until that moment. I'm sure we'll see you again. Thank you. Hey, Donald. Barry. OK, thanks, Larry. Tough loss for Donald Curry. Big win for Mike McCallum, who answered the question, who? Well, you know, two weeks from tonight, we're going to be bringing you the culmination of the HBO Heavyweight Unification Series. That's a series, of course, that began 16 months ago with three different heavyweight champions. It's been a long road to where we are. And let's take a quick look from beginning has an to end. To prove itself by going through a process of elimination, a series of events which we call the Heavyweight World Series, to bring one champion to the fore uh, by the merits of his talent and ability. And now we're gonna... It all started with Pinklin Thomas taking on Trevor Burbick, with much of the talk centering around the fact that Thomas was a bona fide candidate to win the whole thing. End of conjecture. When the dust of this one had cleared, Trevor Burbick was wearing the belt emblematic of the WBC champion. Meanwhile, Michael Spinks had already beaten Larry Holmes once, but still had to prove himself to a rather skeptical public. But the second time around, it was even more clear cut. Spinks was a winner, and it was out with the old, in with the new. Michael Spinks was now the public choice. For the winner, by a split decision, and still. While all the bickering was going on, Mike Tyson was already being talked about as the best of the lot. When he fought Trevor Burbick for the WBC title, Mike Tyson made it clear he was taking no prisoners. Tyson fought often, he fought effectively, and he wanted it all. So if not Thomas and not Burbick, then who was the best of the rest? Tim Witherspoon spoke up when he beat Frank Bruno, but was silenced in one round by the aptly named Bone Crusher Smith. Smith's reign as champion was short-lived. He lost a 12-round hugging match with Tyson, and that brought the aforementioned Pinkman Thomas back into the spotlight. For a short time, Tyson dropped him in six. On the same car, Tony Tucker, who had toiled in anonymity throughout his career, took on Buster Douglas for the IBF title that was vacated by Michael Spinks when he opted for Jerry Cooney in that non-championship championship fight. Tucker won in 10 to set up the battle for it all. On August 1st, Mike Tyson and Tony Tucker teed up for the IBF, WBC, and WBA heavyweight championship. Well, Ray Leonard, we speculated that this could be a very good fight as we remind you that we will be with you again on August 1st at 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 Pacific for the Tyson-Tucker fight, that one for the Undisputed Heavyweight Championship. But to talk a little bit further about the match that we saw tonight, we said it might be a good fight, and it really was a good fight for as far as it went. Well, I tell you, a lot of people felt that uh, Mike McCullen could not hold his own against Donald Curry. But they have to understand that Mike McCullen is, was a determined champion, or is a determined champion, uh, resiliency, and the guy wanted to win. I mean, it was a lot, a lot of motivation there. It was a very good victory for him, and it was a case, I think, one of the few cases of nice guys finishing first. And we'll remind you to stay tuned immediately following HBO's World Championship Boxing coverage for Ray Bradbury Theater, the town where no one got off. That will be followed by Running Scared. And be sure to join us two weeks from tonight when on August 1st, boxing will have a unified heavyweight champion for the first time since 1978. As the WBA and WBC champion Mike Tyson meets the IBF champion Tony Tucker in the final fight of HBO's heavyweight unification.